A reading from the book of Matthew. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hands into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. Let's talk about Judas. In these verses, Judas betrays Jesus. And when we think about this part of scripture, we think about Judas the betrayer and what a grave sin he commits about Jesus. So let's just break down each of the things that Judas does in this verse that um, show his betrayal of Jesus. So we start off in verse 15 when Judas says, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? If we look historically at this time, sin was recognized by the whole society as a grave matter, sin against God. And as a result, people tried to hide it. We know in our society today, um, what we as Catholics consider sin is not considered a sin across the board, is not considered a big deal. And so as a result, people nowadays are much more open about the things that we see as sin. But in these times, um, they were observing the Torah, observing the law, and so it was very clear what was right and wrong, and people tried really hard to hide when they did things wrong. So Judas, who is a friend of Jesus, Jesus, going to the chief priests and just openly saying, what are you willing to give me for him, um, was very bold of him. The chiefs, of course, would not consider it a sin, but to turn against the Lord, of course, is a sin. So to start right away, um, when he says, what are you willing to give to me? Judas just immediately is turning his back on Jesus and sinning openly. And how hurtful would that be to Jesus, who is his friend? Then Judas receives 30 pieces of silver um, for bringing Jesus to them. And this is significant because 30 pieces of silver is the amount of money that a slave cost in ancient Egypt. Um, and of course, the chief priests would have known this because they knew the Torah well. And Judas likely would have also known this. And so the 30 pieces of silver for Jesus just shows how much the priests thought of Jesus. They thought very little of Jesus. They thought he wasn't worth much. And so Judas accepting only 30 pieces of silver shows he felt the same way. Jesus meant nothing to him at this point. So if we go into verse 24, um, when they are at the Passover, Jesus says to the twelve, The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Jesus, of course, knows that Judas is the one that betrays him. He says it later on in the verse. Um, when Judas asks, is it me? He says yes. So at this point, Jesus is saying, the Son of Man goes on as it's written. I'm going to be crucified or um, what the scriptures say will be done, will be done. But at this point, he's pleading with Judas, like, you still, you don't still have to do this. You can turn away. Um, and he offers Judas a second chance. He offers Judas the chance to change his heart. But in verse 25, which follows, Judas says, surely it is not I, Rabbi, which seems one sentence doesn't seem like it's that big a deal, but this is a very straight and clear answer to Jesus. Um, 
Judas is rejecting Jesus' offer here. He is saying no. Um, he's adding hypocrisy to the list of things he knows is wrong because he knows that he's the one that did it. He didn't need to ask. And still he asks. He asks last of all the disciples to see the less, the least suspicious. Um, but at this point, this is just hypocrisy and a rejection to Jesus. And you'll notice that he uses the word rabbi. Surely does not I, rabbi. Whereas earlier in the verse, when we read of the disciples asking, they said, is it I, Lord? They use the word Lord, whereas Judas is using the word rabbi here, which means teacher. Um, and this is also very intentional. He's the only one to not use the word Lord. And it's because at this point in the story, Judas is not Jesus' Lord anymore. So what we can take from this is Judas did something wrong. He, this was a grave matter um, and is what sets the unfortunate events that lead to the crucifixion of Jesus on Good Friday. And I think when we think about this verse, that's the first thing we think about. Judas is, has committed a great evil. And I think we often think of Judas as a different level of evil than we are. But I just want to acknowledge the fact that what Judas did in this section of scripture, what he did this one time, most of us do every day. Jesus is our friend. And how many times do we publicly and privately betray him? How many times do we choose to do things that we know are wrong? How many times do we conform to the world, conform to society, instead of following what we know Jesus wants us to do? Um, the 30 pieces of silver. What's the 30 pieces of silver in your life? What is the thing that you are selling your faith for, selling Jesus for, that is not worth as much as Jesus is worth? Because Jesus is priceless. We can't put a price on him. And still we try to. Still we sell ourselves short rather than just loving him. How many times has Jesus offered us forgiveness? Countless times. How many times do we actually accept it? How many times are we actually willing to turn away? And how many times do we refuse Jesus as our Lord? Um, I know personally, it, it happens. I do it every day. I fall short a million times. And I think it's really important leading up to Easter this weekend to just remember that Judas did this evil thing, but so do we. We are Judas. In this parable, we are not the twelve. We are Judas. So leading into Lent, or ending Lent, leading into Easter, let's just try to remember all of the wrong that we do so that when Easter comes and Jesus is crucified and resurrects, that has so much more meaning when we know that he died for us even when we are acting like Judas, even when we are doing evil things, doing him wrong, betraying him. He still chose us and chooses us. That is an act of choice. Um, he looked at that cross and then looked at us and said, we're worth it, even though we really do so much wrong. So let's just get excited for Easter. I know I'm excited. It is unfortunate we don't get to celebrate um, the Mass together on Easter, but it still is exciting. Let's not let it lose its excitement that Easter is this week.